Welcome to another Gaging Gadgets Garmin Instinct 2 tutorial video. In this video, we're going to dig into the settings for the hike activity on the Garmin Instinct 2. So we'll go through all the different hiking settings, including setting up data screens and selecting the data that you want to be displayed there. We'll then go through other settings, including the GPS that'll be used while you're hiking so you can get better accuracy or better battery life, whatever you'd like, and other things like that. And if this video helps you, consider giving it a like and also subscribing to my channel because it really helps me out. So to get started, we just need to start a hike activity. We can do that by simply hitting the GPS button. And then in the list of available activities, you may have to go all the way to the bottom and add it by going to the others. Simply find and select hike. And then once we're in the actual activity screen here where it's searching for GPS, to get into the menu, we just simply need to hit the menu button or the up button. And then there you go, you can see the hike settings right there. So we can select that using GPS. So the first item in the hike settings is going to be data screens. And this is going to be the screens like this where it displays kind of different data about your actual hike, including a map. So if we select into data screens, we can first see all the different data screens that are currently configured on our Garmin Instinct 2. If we go all the way to the bottom, we can add a new one if we want to, but we can also edit any of these data screens by simply selecting the data screen. And then from here, we can customize this data screen by first selecting the layout for that data screen. And as you can see, this is a four field layout and they have different configurations of that all the way to a five field layout. And you can go to a two field, three field, and then back to four. So I'll do the two field layout. From there, we can go down and see the different fields and we can edit what data is going to be displayed in those fields. So select into one, and these are all the different fields that are available on the Garmin Instinct 2. So first we have timer fields. And within timer, we have all of these. And I'll show you all of them just so you can get an idea of what's available. Distance fields. Pace fields, speed fields, heart rate fields, Cadence fields, temperature fields, elevation fields, compass fields, navigation fields, And then we have other fields. And these will be things such as calories, battery level, GPS, laps, sunrise, sunset, time of day, different things like that that the watch just gathers. So as you can see, tons of different fields that you can add to your activities and view while you're hiking on the Garmin Instinct 2. So this is really cool, very useful as well. So I'm gonna add a compass field for heading. And then after that, I will do a distance field. After the fields in that data screen, we can reorder it within the list of data screens that are available for the hike activity. So as you can see, if I move this, we can move where it's at in the list of data screens. And then also we can delete it as well if we want to. So if I go back, you can now see that data field we just configured. We have the distance in the big field and then the heading in the little small field up here. Additionally, within the hike settings, we can set up alerts. So these will be alerts that are triggered through different sensors and features on the watch. So if we select in there, we can then add a new one. And as you can see, they have custom alerts. And this is where you can set up alerts for drinking, eating, turning around, different things like that. And you can even go to custom where you can use the keyboard on the watch to type out your own custom alert that'll come up based on a certain aspect of the watch. So if I go in here and say, go home, we can set up what kind of alert we want so that that is displayed. You can do it based on time hiking, your distance while hiking, 
And if we go into this, we can do this based on the distance format that we have set up on the watch. So if I go two and a half miles, it's gonna tell me to turn around. Additionally, within the alerts here, they also have heart rate alerts. Where we first have a high alert, so we can pick a zone for that. Or if we go to the bottom, we can pick a custom heart rate, which will be our high alert. Then after that, we can set the low alert, and it will basically alert us if we leave our desired heart rate range, which is pretty cool. So as you can see here, I have alerts set where if I go below 110 or above 183, it will alert me on the watch. Additionally, within the alerts, we can set ones for speed, where you can set a high and a low speed alert, and then a time alert, where at a certain time it will alert you, a distance alert, cadence alerts, calories alerts, different elevation alerts, proximity alerts. So there's tons of different options for building alerts and customizing them to whatever you need on the Garmin Instinct 2, which is really cool. After alerts, we have power mode, and this is where you can configure basically how much battery life you'll watch, your watch will use when using the hike activity. So if we go in here, you can see we have default mode, which is normal, and this tells you what will be available and what will be used. So if we go in and look at some of the other ones, we have max battery, which uses a very inaccurate form of GPS, doesn't have heart rate, and is not connected to your phone. We have jacket mode, where it does have GPS plus GLONASS, and you also have connection with your phone. So you can select that, and then we can also turn on or off the low battery alert and set when that will actually be triggered with how much battery life we have left based on its usage. And then we can also have a low power mode enabled automatically based on the battery life we have left in the watch, which is really cool. So if you wanted to make sure that you're gonna make it through that hike, you can do that here by setting that up. After power mode, we have metronome, and this is where you can turn that on or off and also configure the beats per minute and the alert frequency, as well as if it will make a tone or vibrate based on that. So if I turn that on right here, you can kind of see what that looks like and sounds like, and it's vibrating as well. After metronome, we have auto lap, and this is where you can make it automatically register a lap on the watch. And if I turn that on, you can go in here and you can configure the distance that'll automatically register a lap on the watch. And they also have a lap alert that'll come up and you can configure that here and also see a preview of it. So you'd have the total time and then that current lap plus which lap you're on. And that can all be configured here with the primary and secondary fields. But laps are probably not very important when you're hiking. Additionally, in here we can have the activity automatically pause when you're stopped, or you can have it custom at a certain speed. So if you slow down to one mile per hour, it'll stop the activity. This can just be useful if you are taking breaks often and you don't want that to mess up your activity data. After auto pause in the hike settings, we have auto climb. And this is where if you turn this on, it'll automatically change the screen to a climb screen when it detects a elevation change, which you set. So vertical speed of 1800 feet an hour, which you can go in here and you can change this. And it basically just makes it so that when it automatically detects it, you can see that on the watch easier. And that basically just saves you from having to switch the watch through the different data screens. Maybe if you're on a basic one that shows your heart rate, things like that. When you start doing a lot of climbing, it'll, autom it'll automatically change to show more about the climb. After auto climb, we have 3D speed, and this changes the way the watch determines your speed. So it'll calculate speed using the elevation change and also the horizontal movement over the ground, which is great if you're climbing or descending a lot. So I would recommend turning this on for hiking, as well as 3D distance, which is going to be similar. It calculates distance traveled using elevation change and horizontal movement over the ground, rather than using the GPS for speed, which is just gonna be horizontal. So you'll get a much more accurate speed and distance. After that, we have the lap key. So this goes along with the auto lap. So you can turn on a lap key where if you hit the back button down here, set, that will automatically register as a lap. After that, we have auto scroll, and this is where it will scroll through the data screens within the hike activity that you've configured, and you can configure the speed for that. It'll be kind of like a treadmill or a machine at a gym. After that, we have broadcast heart rate, and this is where the watch will broadcast your heart rate via Bluetooth, which can be useful for certain apps, maybe on your phone or third-party devices, such as maybe some sort of health device or even gym equipment that is Bluetooth enabled for this actual usage. After that, we have GPS, and this is where you can configure what type of GPS is used on the watch during your hike activity. So first we can turn it off, then we can go to normal GPS, which is just going to be one GPS system. So this is for the United States. After that, we have GPS plus GLONASS and GPS plus Galileo. 
So depending on where you're at in the world, I would recommend trying these. It just gives you more satellites that your watch can use. But I believe Galileo is Europe and GLONASS is Russia. So it really depends on where you're hiking to get the benefit out of that. And then we have Ultra Track, which is a low power GPS mode. So it's not gonna use GPS very often. And from what I've read, this is not very accurate as well, but it can definitely extend your battery life. Going back into the hiking settings, we have the power save timeout. And this is where if you open the activity, but you don't actually start an activity, or you've finished an activity and you haven't backed out, it'll automatically back out just to save your battery life. After that, we have the background color of the watch, and this is for preference only. It does not really affect your battery life in any way. So you can do white and black. After background color in the hike settings, we can rename the hike activity to whatever we want. I don't think this changes it within Garmin Connect. So if you change the name, I don't think it'll register as a different type of activity within Garmin Connect. Finally, after rename, we have restore defaults. So if you change something in the hike settings and you're not sure really what happened, but you don't like it, you can always select this and then it will reset the settings back to their default. It'll fix anything that maybe you broke. All right, so those were the hike settings in the Garmin Instinct 2. If you have any questions about this, leave a comment below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you'd like to see more Garmin Instinct 2 tips and tutorials, check the links in the description. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing to my channel, Gaging Gadgets, for more gadget reviews and tech tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.